Hello Internet, welcome. It is now the second day in our quest for LCW decompression for PDF streams. So the last thing we were working on is a decoding filter for PDF streams that are um, LCW, so Lampel Ziv Welch encoded. And yesterday I made a lengthy episode where we developed uh, this uh, decoding algorithm and at the end we ran into a very mysterious problem that somehow just the wrong data came out of our decoding and I couldn't find out what was going on in debugging. I somehow suspected that there was a problem with either the base 85 uh, decoding that comes before the actual LCW decoding or actually with the input data and the latter suspicion uh, actually materialized. So um, shortly after I uh, stopped streaming, I actually found out what is going on and it's, um, it's really a problem with the input data, which is extremely annoying because the input data comes directly from the ISO standard uh, defining the PDF data format and let me open the standard. This is what we were working on. They give an example of a LCW compressed stream. So actually this stream is first LCW compressed and then um, base 85 encoded. So if you want to decompress it you must in the reverse order first um, apply the base 85 decoding and then the LCW decoding. And they claim here uh, in example 4 that the following shows the same stream without any filters applied to it. So the first thing I found out is that um, once you actually get this stream into a PDF file and format it so, so that the stream length matches and so on. You still don't get the correct data because actually um, I found out that here in the last line there seems to be a redundant character. So the way I found this is that first I noticed that the problem that we had occurred exactly at the uh, at the line break. And that was already a bit suspicious. And then I, I did some calculations on, on the data that we got and so I found out that exactly the same, exactly the, the correct data comes out when you remove the first eight here in, in this line. So this, because I noticed that this eight is, is twice here, which I mean which could be correct, but it turns actually out to be a mistake. So uh, this line should start with the lowercase l. And I mean, there would be no way that if this wouldn't, if this would not be a mistake, there would be no way that you get the correct data when you remove this character because all the base 85 decoding would be completely sh uh, shifted and, and would completely scramble the data. So this is definitely a mistake in the ISO standard. It seems they, I, I don't know how this could happen. So it seems they either broke the lines manually or tried to fix some formatting problem or something. So somebody added a redundant eight here. And maybe, uh, probably it's, it's this is the redundant aid because the lines actually all have the same length if you print them in a um, fixed width font. 
So that was the, the first extremely annoying thing. And actually, when you checked the book by Adobe that was the source for the text in the ISO standard, it has the same mistake. So this mistake has been copied from Adobe. So also here, you see the stream that has the two eights here and it just doesn't work with this uh, double eight. So actually it turned out that the, the LCW um, decoder that we developed yesterday was perfectly fine, uh, except for, for one thing that, that I added in uh, but when I was a bit flailing around because I didn't fully understand what is going on. And I can show you. Uh, so luckily it turns out that this linear table search that I quickly added uh, because I was trying out how to get the right result, that this linear table search is not needed, which is very uh, fortunate because this table search would actually turn the algorithm almost into a quadratic algorithm, at least for um, short data. So that would be disastrous for the performance of the decoder. And now I'm quite confident that the decoder is, is correct, but we still need to do a lot of testing. I just quickly walk you through the code that we have currently. So maybe we can even make it a little, uh, a little larger. There's still um, some debugging uh, prints in there. Some of them I will probably leave in there because they are very handy if you have to track down some problem. They, are, they will be compiled out because I set this const expression flag here to false and the debug code is then uh, dependent on this, on this flag and this optimized array. So, um, Actually, I think the code is, is a bit too complicated to, to go through it again now, but um, let me just focus on the particular points that were unclear yesterday. The first is there is a special case in the LCW decoding and first I thought the special case is when you get a table clearing command and then um, the, the first byte afterwards. But actually the first byte afterwards is, is not so uh, special. What is the, the, the actually the special case is that you can get a, a code that is uh, strictly larger than the largest code that you have currently in the lookup table. Actually, it's larger exactly by one than the um, highest um, entry in the lookup table. So that's why we here, we actually uh, only fail if um, the code is even larger than that. So th that is something that I should actually explain here. Um, so if, if the code we get is exactly equal to the number of used table entries, that means actually that already this code is not in our current table. But that's, that is actually a special case that is valid in the LCW decoding. So let me just explain here. We do not fail on code equals and used uh, because that is a special valid case in which Code is not yet in the table, but will be um, 
we add it Um, probably this, this explanation does not make a lot of sense on its own, but it's just to make clear that this is not a mistake that we check for strictly larger here. <clears throat> we accept this code that is equal and here in the lookup we have some special casing of this um, of this case that we should also explain here So that's a special case. We, if we get this, this first code uh, that we don't have in the table, we repeat the sequence that was triggered by the previous code. Um, and this is only possible if the previous code was not a table clearing code. So that's why I fail on, in, in this case. If, if the previous code was a table clearing code, there's no sequence that we can repeat. Uh, so we wouldn't know what to do. So that's the only problem. If we would have a previously a table clearing command, we wouldn't know what to do. So that's a, an error. And uh, then we do the special handling. That is, we repeat the previous code, uh, but we also um, append an additional byte that is a repetition of the first a byte of this sequence that we will uh, repeat. So that, that's just how this, this case is defined. And you can uh, see this if you look up the description of the algorithm in the TIFF standard, for example, then, then you can find this special case.
we can only fill this in below because we actually the the, the sequences are in the table in post order so um, Yeah, so that's now not clear. Otherwise, we do everything like for a normal, uh, for a normally looked up sequence that is triggered from the table. So we uh, we transfer it to the replay buffer in in reverse, and then we we start to re replay it. And here we actually fill in the first byte. And that's it. So that was actually correct as we did it yesterday, um, except for the for the linear table search that we don't need. So this is completely removed. We always we always add a table entry. And we just rely on the encoder to um, um, to always make the best possible use of the table entry. So because the encoder always checks uh, for the longest sequence that it has in its table, we know that actually um, when we append something to the sequence, it is something that has not been yet been in the table. So in the in the decoder it's quite simple that we can always um, always add a new entry to the table. Okay there's there are still some things to clean up but I think the the next step for stabilizing this code is actually to to do um, some extensive testing to shake out any bugs that could be remaining. I did that today for the base 85 um, decode filter and actually I found only a single problem that also surfaced in combination with the LCW uh, decoding and that is that the padding at the end of the base 85 decoded data was not correctly handled because it's not really well explained in the ISO standard or in in Adobe's uh, book. So I think it's also not in the book. Let me check if that is correct what I'm saying. The problem is they describe only the encoder here and the encoder pads with zero bytes but for decoding you must pad with the maximum uh, value which is a u character actually in this case so that's not explained here maybe if you're smart enough you can derive it from from how the encoding is described but i read this in the Actually, in the Wikipedia article on base 85, you can read that this is what you have to do and it turns out exactly that that's the right thing. And so now we do this, this correct padding. And off stream today, I, um, I wrote quite a lot of um, tests for the base 85 decoding. So We take a quick look. We do quite a lot for this encoding. We have the first thing we do is we have a systematic test that checks a, an encoding decoding round trip for 
conceptually for all possible uh, groups of five characters that you can have uh, in, in a valid base 85 decoding. It does not actually check all of them. It uh, checks the, the one hot encoded. Um, so, so for all possible, so for 32 bits, it checks the, all the one hot uh, values. It checks the first 1000 values and the last 1000 values in the 32 bit range and it checks uh, a number of random bounds. So should be extensive enough. Then we have a quite complicated test uh, that also does random round tip with um, randomly generated data. And this tries to um, cover a lot of the combinatoric madness that you get because of um, all the all the variations that you can have in such a textual data format. For example, um, <clears throat> as is typical for textual data formats, the, this base 85 encoding is defined in such a way that the decoder shall ignore white space. And just because of this, you have so many cases how you can insert the white space, which white space characters to insert at which place and so on. And so this, this test does <clears throat> quite a lot of work to pseudo randomly inject white space in the, in the strings and so on at various places. <clears throat> And it generally tries to stress the decoder with all kinds of crazy things that you can do. And yeah, at the end, the round trip is, is checked and we expect to get exactly the, the input data back. Um, and then I have an explicit check for many of the error cases that can happen. So that's also one problem of, of these non-binary textual encodings that you have lots and lots and lots of invalid uh, ca cases of invalid data. So there's a, let's say, semi-systematic check of all of these invalid uh, cases where you have some missing characters or unexpected characters or overflows in the calculation and so on. And all of that is now automatically checked. I also check a nice example from the Wikipedia page on this base 85 encoding. So we check that this input gives this nice decoded output. Okay, so those are the checks, uh, the tests I, I now have for the base 85. So I think it's quite well covered. The only thing missing is a uh, real fuzz testing where we um, throw corrupted data at the decoder and test its stability. So that's basically the only thing missing for really good test coverage. And it should definitely be done even if this this base 85 encoding is for sure quite unimportant for serious PDF files, but the problem is you have to support it because it's in a standard and then it's, as soon as you have to support it, it's um, an opportunity for exploits. So if you wouldn't really test it well, uh, it would not be a problem for normal users, but uh, because they, so normal PDF files will not use this encoding um, normally, but of course maliciously crafted PDF files can uh, use this encoding and can exploit weaknesses that you may, uh, have put in the implementation. So I will also put a note here to um, do fast testing of the uh, ST85 um, decoder. Okay, but now on to the next thing that I discovered. I'm now currently I'm working on a test, an automated test 
for the LCW decoding. And so far the only, let's say, golden data that I have is this, this one from the ISO standard. So we check that if we decode this, we actually get exactly this output, which is a problem first because the white space is completely messed up here. But then there's even a greater problem um, in addition to this um, redundant character here that I can show you now and it's completely crazy and it's a good example of all the bullshit that you have to keep that you have to cope with as a programmer when you um, work with these standards and so on. So you see that the test is currently failing. Let me just, sorry. Um, let me just set a somewhat smaller font size. And actually let me <coughs> get the chat window to the top because I'm not losing hope that someday somebody will like to chat or will have a question or something. So <clears throat> let's look at the, the failure that is reported, the first one. And this is a really funny failure because you see the expected string would be this one, unfiltered streams can be read easily. That is what we get here in the standard. And what is the output of my decoder? Well, the output of my decoder is unencoded streams can be read easily. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> and, and I mean, it's totally obvious that this is not due to a bug in the decoder. You, you just would have no way that um, at the, especially at the beginning of the data when the decoder has not seen other texts, there's no way that this can happen uh, due to a bug in the decoder. So it's obvious that there is a mistake in the standard. This, this data here does not correspond to this um, uncompressed data. It's clearly wrong, it's a lie when they say the following shows the same stream without any filters applied to it. It's not the same stream. Some Bozo has modified this data and has not updated um, the, the compressed data. And it's funny, if you look at the book from Adobe for PDF version 1.7, the reference that this standard is based on, you will find that Let's take a look. So they have the same um, compressed data, actually with the same mistake here. Uh, but then <laughs> they have a text that says unencoded streams. So what exactly what my uh, decoder outputs. And it's obvious that some idiot has edited this example for the ISO standard and has not uh, checked that, uh, has, has not noticed that the example actually claims to be um, the same data as the one compressed above here without filters. So, and I, I don't know, yesterday I, I spent for sure uh, one hour looking for problems in my code because this, this data does not match. Not this particular case, because this I would have noticed immediately that this is not a problem of my encoder, but um, a decoder. Yeah, that's the kind of crap you have to keep up with. So let's and it seems nobody is actually looking at these examples and trying them out. It's really a shame. So let's proceed to fix this, this test. I could have been lazy and just uh, pasted the output of my decoder as the golden reference here, but I don't like to do such things because that's just lazy and 
can hide problems. So I actually copied the, the example from the standard and yeah, this is what I get for being diligent. I run into problems like this. <clears throat> for sure, we will have lots of remaining problems due to um, the white space probably. So let's compare. Okay, here we have a, uh, a missing space. So there's actually no space here. There's no space here. Then you have TG and then there is the new line, which finally is only a carriage return in this case. And then no space and have so no TD space. Oh. Okay, I think we should pass one more block of data now. And we just have to go through this. I still think this is a better check than if I would have just used the output of my decoder as the golden reference because I have at least a chance to find additional problems this way. Okay, so here we have an extra, an extra new line in our expected data that is not actually there. So which one is this? This, this one. So here we actually have only a space. Probably here it will be the same. Let's see. Only annoying thing is that I always have to recompile and this takes forever. That's really my, my single biggest pain point with C++ is the compile time. So that looks already quite good. Okay, here we have also a white space problem. So it's actually like this. Wow, this is quite, quite tedious. Okay, we pass one line more. So let's take a look at the next one. Tag. So we don't have the space here. More space than no space here. TJ and then we have the new line. And here we have actually encoded streams, not compressed streams. So this is probably also here in the PDF, we have encoded streams. Yeah, and then the ISO standard, they write compressed streams, but the idiots did not update the compressed data. That's so annoying. No white space here, no white space here, no white space here. So no new line here. Okay, 
let's just go on like this. Sorry for these boring parts, but that's just, maybe it has some value as showing some of you the more tedious parts of being a programmer, a diligent programmer, because I could really make my life easy. In this case, That's not the way to go. TJ, no space. And here, I guess we don't have the, yeah, we don't have the R here. Some are used for compression and others simply TJ. Okay, here we actually have a space here, but not here. Let's see how far we get now. Simply, okay, this space is not really there. So, so, so compression. Okay, <laughs> another difference. Some of the compression filters uh, is actually not filters, but it is encoding methods. R okay this this backslash is not not really here. Uh, suitable only oh no I jump I jump a line here uh, suitable Yeah, but, but that's right. So a suitable, actually like this, this, this. So T star for both data and images. While others are, again, no, nothing here. Suitable only. Space here, but not here, I guess. Not here. Not here. Not here, not here. Okay, maybe that's it.
Woohoo! So let's remove the debug prints and we have a self-checking test for this case. Nice, 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 nice. Okay. So some debug prints from our PDF stream open. Test data stream is also fine, so let's run our test suite. Okay, now we have one test, one reasonable test. We should probably write a note here. <clears throat> what we maybe should do is maybe we should also randomize the buffer size uh, that we give to the PDF file that would be probably a good idea to randomize this. Let's randomize this in the follow following way. Um, let's first randomize the power of two. I really should use the namespace here. So a power of two up to Two to the ninth, that would be five hundred twelve. And let's add to that seven 
something to make this to get some odd numbers. <clears throat> something like that. Passes. That will make the test a bit more interesting, the synchronization. Oh, we have a fail. That's interesting. Oh, it's just our randomization is broken. Why is that? Oh, ah, aha. Uh -huh. No, it's not. It's, yeah, it's our, because actually a PDF file buffer must always be at least 1k large because we we use that <coughs> we do we do assume and assert that this is something that we should we should really document here Actually, I'm not even sure if I still need this because now I have implemented the backwards parsing properly. I should at some point, I should check if this restriction is still needed. You see that, I mean, the, even though the, our anonymization didn't work, it at least highlighted to us this unclean property of, of the existing code. So we can can't really do a lot here. What we can do is we can play a bit with other buffer sizes that are larger than 1k.
Yeah, no, it's working again. Um, And I should maybe try something nice habit that I, I saw John Blow to do is that if you have if you have connected nodes like that in your code to put a tag on them um, and let's call it <clears throat> Let's call it a PDF file buffer size. And we put this everywhere where, we, where this is a topic. So whenever we clean this up, we know at which places to look for it. <clears throat> okay. So, but we still only have a single test. And now the question is, how the heck do we get more LCW test data? And I think the way I want to do it, because the problem is, if you look into implementations of LCW, they all have their own quirks and problems. So, for example, if you look up um, the if you look up the Wikipedia page for um, for the compressed utility, so the Unix compressed utility uses LCW compression. It's one of the classic implementations that is still around today. And if you if you read the article, it says there is a special output format and it is describes something very weird that whenever they change the code size, the compress utility actually does a byte alignment of the codes which is absolutely unnecessary and they actually say here yeah it's it's true it's actually a bug this is unnecessary but since since all the original unix compress has for all the decades been doing that so now all implementations have the same bug and they have to have the same bug in order to be compatible to the original compress utility it is just ah, so ugly so for more than 35 years, all of these implementations of LCW have to have this bug in order to be compatible with the original Unix compress. That's so ugly. And so that means also for us, because the LCW as it is defined for it by Adobe does not have this bug, uh, we cannot really use compress at least not in an unmodified way. We cannot really use compress to generate test data for us. So, um, other options. I think our best guess is to use the TIFF uh, image format because, of course, PDF is closely related to and incorporates image formats. And so I guess that they do LCW uh, compression and decompression in the same way that the TIFF uh, library does it. And then you, you enter another quagmire. So if you, so compress is a mess that, that we won't use compress. 
but also the TIFF library is a mess because if you look in the source code, um, let's see if actually if the SCW is here, yeah, it's here. Because fortunately the patterns have expired, so now it can be included by default. If you look here, it actually has two different implementations of LCW because they also uh, say, yeah, there is a popular implementation that actually has a bug that it, uh, it has a different bug. It has a bug that it increases the code size one step too early, so a typical off by one error. And in order to be compatible, they also must do this. And yeah, and for some other reasons, they have two different implementations in there. So again, it's not clean and we don't really know which implementation we should check against. Actually, for this off by one error, Adobe has defined a filter argument, filter parameter. Imagine that. So where do we have that? The, that's the early change that we already dealt with yesterday. So this bug is so frequent, it seems, that they actually introduced a filter um, parameter where you can turn on intentionally this switching of the code size one too early. So one step too early. And so you can decide whether you use the actually the um, the switching scheme that makes sense because you switch as late as possible or whether you want to switch one, one step early. And we have actually implemented this and I have no idea how to test this because we will need to get test data that for both variants and yeah, don't know where to get this test data from. The implementation is actually quite easy. So we just add zero or one here in this comparison and that's it, but it's, it's hard to find test data for it. But anyway, so my plan is I have already installed in my Sigwin 64 um, installation. I have already installed the TIFF tools and there is a tool that is called raw to tiff And that looks very interesting because with this tool you can convert um, raw data into an LCW compressed TIFF image. And I think I want to use that in order to generate test code. or not test code uh, in order to generate test data. So let's, let's see how we would be using that. In the end, I probably do not want my test suite to depend on this tool being available. So I think what I will do is to write a generator that generates a test data that we can then use without having this tool available. That's probably the best option. So let's try this. We already have a generator for the Huffman table stuff. So let's make generate LCW test data. Not even sure if we will need PDF parser. Yeah, probably we need the memory stuff and the status stuff. JBIG2 we won't need, so this can all go away. Uh, 
Uh, this is stuff we need. We will need to generate a file. Oh, actually, we print the standard out. Okay. That's our starting point, an empty generator. Uh, we need to add this. I think I want to start with this test port uh, or not. I mean, maybe I, I, I should have actually a, a separate directory for generated test stuff. But data yeah the problem is <clears throat> that the PDF library currently pulls in a lot of dependencies <clears throat> Let's see if we can build this generator and run it. Oh, I specified to no. Ah, this is a mistake I often make with Win when I. when I create a new file so I modified the wrong the wrong file I modified the original that's annoying but we can easily fix that so generate often tables to generate a three list data new Oh, it's not smart enough to... That's bad. It's 
not smart enough to notice that we have that's that's very sad the great ninja too has this wonderful name and does not even notice that we have renamed our source files that's so sad <coughs> Okay. Oh, now we are missing the we're missing some symbols. So actually, um, I think I will need here simply the test libraries, something like that. Yeah. Okay. How long it takes just to build an empty executable? That's crazy. So one sign that I should really drop CMake as a build system and do something simpler. So now we have the empty starting point. <clears throat> okay steps are the following we will generate some random data uh, write it to a file and call this raw to tiff utility to convert it to a tiff image then we'll open the tiff image file and we will read our lcw encoded data from it those are the steps so let's <clears throat> let's set up randomization Um, I should type file names correctly. <clears throat> okay, I should call random init. Seed from time to true. Or maybe not because <clears throat> I probably want my generator to be deterministic so and it doesn't have all the mechanisms of the unit tests for for controlling the seed So let's see if we get um, deterministic numbers. Sorry, why typing so badly? Yeah, we get every time we get the same number, that's fine. <clears throat> so let's let's generate some random data. First we need to decide on the size of the data and I think we will 
it will need to be a size that will be the size of an image but we can always make the image only one column or one one row so we can use any size as long as it does not exceed the limits of the tiff uh, image format so let's uh, say data length Let's start with small data. <clears throat> so probably we want to be smart about that so that we, I mean, I don't know if TIFF, unders, if, if, if support zero size images, that will be interesting to see. So maybe let's make this even smaller so that we will get eventually zero size image. Then we need a buffer for our data. it and then we will write it to a file right So we open it for writing. <clears throat> Binary. Let's see if we can do, do we already have, um, do we have the necessary functions for doing somewhat nicer error handling. Somewhere we have this. Somewhere I already implement exit error. Yeah, that's it. Exit Windows system error, exit error. I think I also have something that uses String. Oh. I thought I had a, a function that <coughs> that takes care of formatting a standard library error. It seems I don't have it. But let's start to build here a system of useful functions. So I think Those are so useful 
that we want to export them. And let's also make a exit C lib error. Let's see if we can make something nice. Uh, So the way th this would work is similar to this. Error. And then what we specified ourselves. And then something like this. Yes, that will be useful. Um, Oh, okay, so Is there a memory done? Memory free. Okay, this should actually be memory done. Because it doesn't actually free. Fine. <clears throat> we get an error for this remaining. The point being that my convention is that free actually frees the memory pointed to by the pointer that it gets. And done is like a destructor that acts in place and does not do that.
Not sure if we should set men to no pointer here. Well, maybe it doesn't hurt. Yeah, here the same problem. <clears throat> I need to follow some of our new conventions here. Yeah, and now we can actually try here to do some nice error handling. So if not raw file, then we will exit clib error. So let's exit clib error. Yeah, that's in a test namespace, so I guess we will just use that here. But we should call it test exit clib error, because I don't really trust the namespaces. I think I will maybe at one point get rid of <coughs> yeah yeah blah 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 these warnings are so annoying Okay, then let's close the file again. And let's check if our error reporting works by specifying an invalid file name. Could not create file. Error. Okay, there's something wrong. Oh, with the error, no such file or directory. That's a bad error message, but probably that's what the <coughs> that's what the C -lib actually tells us. So we will change this. We will do an exit here and just do a f print f standard error. So that looks better. Could not create file, no such file or directory. Okay, we have error handling, ladies and gentlemen. So let's just write our binary data to the file, and I never remember the arguments of this function. This, the order. I remember which arguments there are, but size, k, 
count. That's what I never remember. Should actually also check the close, I guess, and return returns EU. So some errors might be postponed until the closing. Really? <clears throat> this is a size T. So the next step is to to call the tool to convert this thing. system call and the system call has this very strange uh, convention for the return value Command is depends on the system if it is generally expected to be the status code. <sighs> yeah, that's not very useful. That's so bad. Let's see what, what Microsoft says about it. If command is not system returns to value is run by command in computer. Okay, so it should be zero. I think that's similar to on Unix. I think if it works, it's also zero. And if it's negative, then we can um, It's negative, <clears throat> it's a CLIP error, otherwise if it's non-zero, it, it uh, we can say 
exit error. That's probably about as good as we can do. Let's first do something that will for sure fail. Okay, that was not so good. Error command. Oh, because I forgot this. So, yeah, always important to test your error handling. <clears throat> error command exit this is now zero exit code one okay so we probably never get a clib error because it always finds at least the command exe and then we get the result from command exe but at least that worked let's try Very ugly thing, hard coding the path, but step by step, let's do it. Okay, we can actually execute it. Um, nice. So let's assemble some options. So input data order LSP to NSP. I think we will just <clears throat> use individual bytes so that this should not be a problem. Size of the header we will leave at zero. Uh, with we will set to um, our our data length um, height height we will set to one. Okay, it's actually length. That's funny. Uh, number of bands we leave at one. Uh, data type will be byte. Photometric. I don't know if we actually need that, but we will do something like this. Mini min is min is black. Small bytes. Don't swap bytes. No interleaving. Okay, and now we specify the interesting stuff the compression LCW. We can set predictor values. I think one is no predictor. If this uses the same convention as PDF. And then we need the output file.
Okay, we made some mistake in our options. Oh, probably because we did not specify our input file. Say what the problem is. No, it does not say what the problem is. Um, maybe uh, did we? They should be fine. D data type P photometric minus C uh, C W. Input raw, output TIFF. Okay, so why do, what, what is the purpose of the minus O? If I have to specify the output anyway. Okay, we do have a TIFF file, so let's have a look at this TIFF file. So where are we? Okay, so now I should probably look at the TIFF standard to see and understand what all of this means. And where are actual, where are actual freaking data is. Problems with my Bluetooth mouse. So where is the actual data? Um, TIFF specification. Ah, but I think it's it really is available. It's just not the right link.
So 92, quite vintage. Tiff structure. Right order, sorry, I, I. Mm. <laughs> you know, arbitrary but carefully chosen number 42. <laughs> Very funny. Okay, and then there's an image file. So the first eight, so these are the header. And that's the offset. Of the image file. So the directory is actually at one six hex. So that's here. Here starts the directory, and maybe this in between is the data that we actually want to have. Too bad count of number of directory entries. <clears throat> 14 entries, that's quite a lot. Uh, each 12 bytes. Well, let's see if this works out. Uh, 168, this is starting at this one, um, C0, and then we have the four bytes, yeah, that's fine. So we have really 14 entries here, why do we have 14 entries in such a simple so we always have a tag a tag is wrong so tag field type
So where, where is actually the image data compression? Let's let's look for the compression. So we should have a tag 103 hexadecimal. This is tag 100, 101. Uh, we go by 12, 102. We go by 12, 103. That's the 103. Um, the type that's the type as a short there's one of it okay there's one of it and it starts at offset five Does it really point to really point to five that points into the image error? Okay, so 100 is the image width. 100, type short. We have one of it, it's at offset nine. Don't get offsets, they don't make sense to me. Oh, maybe this is just directly the value in this case. So it's a value nine. Ah, yeah, that, that makes sense. Value nine, so nine pixels. This is actually, this is the, yeah, that makes sense. And this is the height, that's one. This I don't know yet. But this is the compression and five is the LCW, I think. Compression scheme five, yeah, that's fine. I have this incredibly bad description of the algorithm. And where is actually the, where is the compressed data? I should probably look at grayscale images. Okay, 102 is bits per sample. This we should also have. We have a 102, eight bits per sample. That makes sense, okay.
compression for automatic interpretation. The strip offsets are probably one on one. They are probably that what points us to the data. So it's probably those one on one. There's one of them. It's eight, yeah, eight would make sense. And then this would be strip byte counts, 117. And that could be this, 117. And we have 13 bytes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Yes. That that makes sense. And then we have one alignment byte, so we get to a word boundary and then okay, this is all this is all making sense. That's quite a simple format. Very relaxing compared to a mess like PDF. So we will just do some simple TIFF format reading, right? So I guess first I want to read the entire file into memory because we don't we won't use very large files. Um, we could do it using the Windows API, but for this I think it really doesn't matter. So. I think we need something like FTEL and FSEQ. Yeah, we need to do this funny dance to get the file size. So we need to do the stupid F seek. No, F seek. Turn value. If successful, it runs here. <laughs> Every single of these functions has a different convention for that. That's why I introduced the status object in my code base. Because I always want to have the same convention for returning errors, not
this is so stupid. There should just be a function for <clears throat> a function for reading the whole damn file. Yeah, we actually should, we should also check our allocations to be clean here. Let's for the time being keep it simple. And just put a third at least, so it's better than nothing. So this is again the one I never remember, but it should be same like this. Oh, we will need to seek back to the beginning, right? Uh, this gives us an opportunity to test our error handling because we forgot to seek back to the beginning. So that's of course the TIFF file, not the file name. This is so I really need to disable all of these warnings. Yeah, we have a problem. Invalid file open mode, okay. Interesting. So the B, yeah, RB is the right one. Couldn't read file. No error. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's no error. That's right because actually we hit end of file. So yeah. We need to do the seeking again. OK, 
okay, we have the data. <laughs> Just this much code that you need to read a damn file into memory. Maybe I should not have used libc. So, What did we have? Auto magic. First EFD. Okay, this should actually be a reinterpret cast. Right, if we do this the C way. Let's see if this basically works. This <clears throat> just a very crude way of yeah, this seems to work. So the IFT has. count and then it's variable size that's a bit annoying So what did we have there? I think we had a tag, we had a type, we had a count, and we had a value. Should be 12, 12 bytes. So can we make sure that this is packed, this structure?
So Prama Prama Peg. So we want all of those packed tightly. Just some sanity checks. We don't really do real error handling on this here. <clears throat> nice. So what we really need is not that much. I mean, we could verify lots of stuff, but what we really need is the, the strip offsets and the strip byte counts. So 111 and 117. We should also assert that it's a, an little Indian file. What was the little Indian? This was the II. 4949.
one on one strip offset. That's probably should be a switch, right? This is really crying out for being a switch. So we only we only want a single strip, so we should assert the count is one in both cases. Should also verify the type probably. Okay, and that that should be enough to extract the to actually extract the data. So mm -hmm.
<clears throat> so we print print the data in C syntax. Okay, the first check didn't work, but apart from that. Looks okay. Oh, yeah, because it's already incremented. Okay, that looks already quite nice. So I think <clears throat> I'm close to wrapping up for today. What I want to do still, so let's pipe this to a file. Just for trying things out. Yeah, this is a this is a problem that we have this output. This needs to be removed. I still want to see Let's make a very, very quick and dirty check if this is reasonable data. very dirty just include this stuff here something similar to this.
Okay, of course this phase now, so I just need the uh, just need this for now. Okay, I don't think that this will really work because the, the beginning of the data does not look like it, it matches what we expect. I think that probably the, the bit order is different. The bit bit order is different than what we expect. So this will not work now. Yeah, doesn't work. Cannot work because the bit order is the other way around. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure if that can be, if that can be changed. I mean, there was one uh, the bit order, but that's about the input bit order. And they do talk about the bit order in this, in the source here. But the minute code is in a bit order opposite to it is back. Let's see if we if we read something about the bit order here.
just something about the bit model. I mean, if you see that the bit order is different because it says here that first code is always the clear table command and that matches the data only if we invert the bits. Compression codes are stored in the bytes in high to low order fashion. So maybe it is only the bytes. Maybe we only need to invert the bit order in the bytes. So let's try that. So how do we do that again? You do That swaps the nibbles. And then we do this. And finally, we do one zero, one zero is. Something like this. Where is the syntax error? Oh, here. There is syntax error. Just to go save. Um,
we pass. That's it. It's just a bit order in the bytes. The byte order is fine. That is great. Because that, yeah, that makes it really simple. The question is just the compatibility with PDF. That's strange. But otherwise, this works. Let's just check the sensitivity by changing this from CB to DB. <laughs> Let's see if our test is sensitive to that. Yeah, it is. But it's actually CB. Very nice. I think that's a good a good point to wrap the stream for today. So we have basically a solution in place to generate test data for our LCW decoding. It will be very interesting, especially to generate very large test data. <clears throat> and yeah, so this we will do next time. And generate some large test files. Large meaning in particular that the full lookup table of the LCW decoder should be exhausted. Okay. Successful today. So in case if anybody is watching, thanks for watching and hope to see you next time. Bye.